Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am finally back with another video. Today I'll be sharing with you everything about sublimation printing, from converting the printer and setting it up, the supplies you need, and lastly, I'll be walking you through my first sublimation project, so make sure you stick around till the end of the video to see how I put this printer to the test. Sublimation printers are more pricey, so converting your own printer is a great affordable option to create the same sublimation projects. I started by unboxing my printer. This is the Epson EcoTank 4700. For sublimation, you can convert any EcoTank model, but the most commonly used by crafters are the 2720, 4700, and the 15000, which has the ability to print larger designs. You want to make sure you purchase a brand new printer for this because we will be filling it up with sublimation ink. So I don't really recommend using an old printer that has been previously filled with other type of ink since it would be difficult to properly clean it out. The printer does come with these inkjet bottles, but these are not for sublimation so we will be switching them out for the correct ones later on. I removed all of the packaging and tape to reveal the printer. I love how it feels very sturdy and looks nice as well. All of the buttons you'll be using to manage the printer are located on the front part, and on the right side are the ink tanks. Like I said earlier, I'll be switching out these inkjet bottles for these Cosmo sublimation ink bottles instead. I was originally going to purchase a kit from Amazon, but unfortunately they were out of stock when I checked, so I went with my second choice, which were these from Cosmo Inc. I have heard many great things about it, so I decided to give them a try. These type of ink bottles are very easy to use since they have a nozzle that fits right in without having to use syringes and making a mess. The Amazon Sublimation Ink also had that option and were much cheaper, so I will also be linking those in the description box in case you get lucky and are back in stock now. Carefully remove the cap and the packaging on each of the bottles, then screw them back on once you are done. You can wear some gloves to prevent getting ink on your hands in case it gets a little messy. The ink tanks on this printer are located on the side. Open the top and you should see all of the tanks labeled by the color that belong in each. There is black, yellow, magenta, and cyan. Each tank has a blue lid. This is where we will be filling every individual color with our sublimation ink that matches with the label. Insert the ink bottle into the correct tank and let it sit. You should hear a gulping sound. This means the ink is pouring into the tank properly. Do not squeeze the bottle, just let it do its own thing. Once the sound stops, it's time to remove it. The tank should now be completely loaded with ink. You can also watch the ink level rise for each color through the clear window. Repeat this process for yellow, magenta, and cyan, making sure you are pouring them into the correct color tank. Clean the tanks to make sure there was no leaking. Once you have finished filling up the tanks, we are ready to plug it in and set it up. When you turn your printer on, it's going to ask you to fill up simple information such as your language, location, time, and date. After that, press the question mark button for 5 seconds to initiate the process, which takes about 10 minutes. It will give you the option to adjust the alignment, so I went ahead and loaded my printer with regular printer paper. That way, I don't waste any of my sublimation paper yet. It's going to run through a printer head nozzle check to make sure the printing quality is good. This is how mine printed. As you can see, it's missing a few segments, so I decided to run it through the nozzle check one more time. I simply selected no when it asked if the print head was clear and printed it again. I ended up printing it a few more times. 
Lastly, it will ask you if you want to set up the fax. Just select no since you don't need that feature for sublimation printing. Next, I went on the Epson official website and searched for my printer model and downloaded the software. But I've always felt that something's missing. That was until I found you. It was very simple, just make sure if you get this warning to select the correct operating system for your computer. In case you need help with what to do next, here's a time lapse of me going through the process. Once you go through everything, it's going to print out a page like this one saying you successfully installed your new printer. Now let's talk about the supplies you will need for sublimation printing. Most importantly, you will need sublimation paper. I am using this ASAP sublimation paper from Amazon. It comes with 110 sheets. They also sell them in a variety of sizes depending on which printer you own. This one I have is 8.5 inches wide by 11 inches long. To improve your printing for this particular sublimation paper, go to the printer settings, set the paper setting as premium presentation paper mat. This will allow the paper to absorb more ink and provide better quality results. Next, you will also need heat resistant tape to hold your prints in place while you use the heat press. This semi-automatic tape dispenser is optional, but in my opinion, is an absolute game changer. It's so convenient because it cuts the perfect pieces of tape and it saves you so much time when taping your sublimation projects. What I also love about it is that it fits both of the heat resistant tape rolls from Amazon and the smaller Cricut brand ones with the help of an adapter. Every time you need tape, you simply twist the knob on the side and it cuts them for you. It's so easy. You will also need sublimation blanks. There are a ton of options, everything from coasters, keychains, tumblers, shirts, and much more. Also make sure you have a lint roller in hand to remove any lint from your sublimation blanks. Another must-have is this butcher paper roll from Amazon. This is going to protect your surface and prevent ink bleeding on your heat press. Lastly, you will need a heat source like a Cricut Easy Press or any heat press of your choice. If you're using an Easy Press, don't forget to use a heat mat to protect your surface. Everything that I just mentioned will be linked in the description box. Now that our printer is all set up and ready to go, it's time to test it out. For my first sublimation project, I decided to make a coaster. I'll be using Cricut Design Space, but you can use any software you would like. I added this SVG and adjusted the sizing to fit on a Cricut ceramic coaster. Once you finish your design, press continue, send to printer and unselect the bleed option, and turn on the setting dial. This should prompt up. This is where we will be changing the printing settings to get the best results. For color matching, make sure the Epson color control option is selected. There is no need to change nothing on the paper handling or on the cover page. Printer settings is where we will be adjusting the media type to presentation paper mat, the print quality to high, and make sure you mirror your image. Load your sublimation paper to the rear tray facing the right way and click print. As you can see, the design printed with the colors a little bit more faded compared to the original SVG, but don't worry, this is how it's supposed to look. The colors will become more vivid once we sublimate it onto our blank. After trimming your image, place it on the coaster and use heat resistant tape to set it into place so it doesn't move around. Next, take a piece of parchment paper and place your coaster in the middle and fold it to keep the ink from getting on the heat press. I added a Cricut Teflon sheet on top to add an extra protective layer. Set your heat press to the correct temperature. For these coasters, I set it to 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 60 seconds. Place your heat press directly on top of your blank and let it sit until the time is up. Make sure to not move around, just add direct pressure. Once it's done, let the coaster cool for a few minutes and remove the paper to reveal your finished project. 
Look how beautiful the colors came out. The process was very simple and easy. The thing I love about sublimation is that the ink is permanently infused into the blanks, which I find very neat. I am so excited to create more projects with my sublimation printer. So that is all for today's video. If you've been interested in getting started with sublimation printing, I hope this video helped you decide if this is something you would like to learn. I promise it's not as intimidating as it seems. It's very fun and simple to set up. If you aren't already, don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time with a new DIY.